Welcome to the Legal Advice in Paradise podcast, brought to you by www.legaladviceinparadise.com. Even in one of the most beautiful places in the world, life can be litigious. On this podcast, the best and brightest legal minds gather to help you navigate your way through every legal question you may face. This program will help you know your rights, know what steps to take, and help you find the best legal representation, all in simple, easy to understand terms. And now, here's your host, Justine Gronwald. Aloha, and thank you for tuning in to our next podcast episode. Want to make sure you never miss an episode, as well as get tips on how to hire an attorney and be eligible for monthly prizes? It's easy. Just join our free membership called the Agent of Change Membership. Text your name and your email to area code 808-670-3400. Make sure you text back agree. And also, to check out our past episodes, just log in to www dot legal advice in paradise podcast dot com now enjoy the next episode aloha aloha agents of change this is justine with legal advice in paradise welcome back to another episode today i have the honor and privilege of speaking with attorney steve gutman who specializes in bankruptcy law good morning and uh, you know, this, for me, I, we were just talking before the, the show, you know, went on air about how bankruptcy is such a scary word when people hear it because what it entails is that you're not in good financial situation, right? You're not, you know, so we're going to cover the basics and then I'm going to ask him some um, deeper questions about it, what what it entails and everything. But before we start, um, Steve, tell us a little bit about you and your career in law. Well, I've been an attorney here in Hawaii since 1973 and have been doing bankruptcy uh, since sometime in the mid-70s. Wow. Um, so I've been doing it for quite some time and have seen a lot of changes in the bankruptcy law over the years. And what a lot of people don't realize about bank- bankruptcy is that it actually has very ancient roots. If you actually look at the Old Testament in Deuteronomy, mm. it talks about forgiveness of debt after seven years. Right, exactly. And, Every seven years. And that is still in today's American law. Well, seven I'd years. love to hear that. You know, um, and going back to the, referring to the Bible, um, I just realized in, in reading that that's where statutes came from. Yes, the Old Testament is is, is very much a, uh, a lot of it is, is a legal and setting down laws and rules. And a lot of those still remain very valid today. Cool, all right. So we're gonna start with the basics. We're gonna say, what is bankruptcy? Well, the basic concept is that after you file the bankruptcy and the process is completed, you you will no longer be liable for the debts. That is, you have no further obligation to to pay what, what is owed. The, the bankruptcy um, that most people file is called a Chapter 7, and it's a liquidation bankruptcy. And it covers most debts. It doesn't cover all debts. There are a few debts that you cannot get rid of in, in bankruptcy, mm. but most debts you can get discharged. Mm-hmm. And um, what are, what are those, those uh, exceptions that are not, uh, you know, which, which debts are exempt from Bank, the one uh, that, chapter seven, you said. The chapter seven, right? The one that becomes the uh, the most frequent for for most people is, is support obligations. You, if you have an arrearage owing, if you haven't been paying the child support, mm. you're not going to be able to use the bankruptcy court to get rid of the the child support or, or the alimony payments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's also for intentional torts. You can't go out and intentionally hurt somebody, and and then file the bankruptcy after the person has the medical bills and be oh. and, and, and use the bankruptcy court to, to get out from under that liability. Mm. Now, if it's, if it's negligence, which in most cases when somebody gets injured, it's a car accident. You don't, do, you don't get in the car accident on purpose. You, that debt can be discharged. But like, if you like purposely ho- went and rammed somebody, it's right, a little right, different. Right. So you're saying like the, the hospital bills that are incurred from 
from um, yes that was not your fault yes okay but one type of debt that is not dischargeable is if you caused the accident because of drunk driving drunk mm. drivers do not get their debt discharged if it's just a normal accident you happen to move your head the wrong time and 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 you couldn't break quick enough uh, when things started happening that kind of debt you can discharge in the bankruptcy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so one of the, the things is is going over with an individual what what are their debts um, and sometimes it's it's a question of, of when do you file not not if you file right right when because when is it yeah because sometimes if the debt is significantly tax debt most tax debts can be discharged if they get to be a certain age hmm. um, but if you um, in 2013, had ended up with a fifty thousand dollar tax income tax debt because you didn't have any have any deductions, or you took twenty deductions on your on your paycheck, and and obviously that, right. that ended up with a with a shortfall. Um, you can't go in 2014 file it, but if you wait a few years, um, you you will be able to discharge it to the extent the government hasn't been able to collect it in the in-between time period. Wow, I didn't know it, it applied to taxes. It does. It Not all taxes, but most taxes. It does mm -hmm. not, for an employer, uh, apply to what they call fiduciary taxes, that is, uh, Social Security taxes um, that the employer is supposed to have, have paid over, or, or withholding taxes but failing to make the payment to the government. Mm -hmm. But other than the fiduciary tax, um, once the tax is, is more than three years old and you measure the three years from, from, the, from the filing date to simplify the, it's actually a little more complicated, but to simplify it, you basically measure from, from date of filing, date mm -hmm. of assessment, and after three years have gone by, you can discharge most debt again except for the fiduciary. And it sounds like when it comes to taxes, you do have interest and penalties that are incurring. Are those all... Um, those are all discharged, discharged too. Discharged. That's the word, discharge. I right. was going to use the word exempt, but that's different. Right. But then it, okay. it can become an issue, too, though, because, see, after a certain amount of time, frequently the government will file a tax lien. Mm -hmm. And bankruptcies do not discharge automatically liens. Oh. So they may not be able to garnish your, your, your paycheck, levy your paycheck, but... To the extent they have a lien on on real property, that lien does not disappear, mm -hmm. so that lien could still be in place. So, part of uh, what what's involved for the attorney when when meeting with a client is, is really getting a, a very complete financial background. Yeah. Because not all everybody can really use a Chapter Seven, oh. um, and that's why there are other types of bankruptcies. There, there's a Chapter Thirteen. Mm -hmm which is used to be called a wage earner plan and that's paying debt not necessarily the full amount but 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 a certain amount of it over a minimum of three years up to five years sometimes the, the situation is even more complicated or um, and they have to file a chapter 11 which is a historically a business reorganization right. proceeding I, I think about I think about business when it comes to chapter 11 but individuals can file Chapter 11s, too. Oh. And because if they file a Chapter 7 and they're going to lose their home, that's clearly not an option that they want to follow. But if the, uh, the home that they, they own has is, is got mortgage debt that is, <clears throat> excuse me, is, is too large, they may not be eligible for a Chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And the only way to save the home is through the Chapter 11. I see. So it, it's... Well, that brings the question, though. What is the difference between Chapter 11 and foreclosure? I mean, I don't want to get too way off on bankruptcy, but now I see, you know, there's foreclosure. If you can't, if you can't afford your mortgage, people will short sale, foreclose. What, how does Chapter 11 come into play with a mortgage? Well, what happens is a lot of times the reason the Chapter 11... Or 13 is filed is is in order to stop the foreclosure the foreclosure is while you can do it in federal court they're normally a state court proceeding it's a it's, it's the method by which 
the the lender takes back the property. Right, because you can no longer pay. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and the 11 and 13, if depending upon the particular financial situation of the individual, may be a way to cram down a a payment plan on the arrearage that that is owed that had accrued. Mm -hmm. and being, a, being able to save the home. Wow. Because any, any time you file a bankruptcy case, well, I shouldn't say any time, um, in, in, in most cases when you file the bankruptcy case, the, the state court proceeding is stayed automatically. Um, so the when foreclosure you, when you say stayed what it is goes that? on hold oh it goes on hold okay. and by it going on hold um that gives the the idea is to give the the homeowner some time to try to reorganize the debt through the 13 or or the 11. oh in the chapter seven um you, you really are are you'll get rid of the underlying debt, but you're not gonna keep the home if you file a chapter seven. I see. Because again, as I, as I said a little bit earlier, I mean, bankruptcy does not get rid of liens. Mm -hmm. It only gets rid of, of, of debt. Mm -hmm. So by doing the 11 or 13, you, you, you are, you're gonna get a certain amount of time, and how much time you're gonna get depends upon really if you have a viable plan. Because a lot of times, how, you know, people end up having the delinquency because they're laid off they, they yeah, have a medical I, problem I was going to ask you the common the common causes for having to look into bankruptcy and why don't you just name the really common ones or all of them if you, well all of them yeah. each other, that's how many people are there <laughs> so you know but the, it would statistically be laid, being, statistically being laid off well statistically the, the the largest reason is is medical oh um that the either because of the medical bills that are, that accrue, or the the fact that they're not working for a period of time and they may have just be um, re receiving you know, t t a temporary disability right, income which is payments. Just a percentage. It's a very of, small amount. Of if they were having a paycheck to paycheck kind of um, you know um, income, and then you only get a percentage of that now, I can see how it send you backwards in a hurry yes yeah and and so what happens is you know, the you're not able to, to make the the mortgage payment for for, for right. that period of time everything works out on the health side you're able to go back to work you're having the paycheck and then the lender won't work with you to to deal with the arrearage and basically says if you if you don't pay the full amount that had accrued uh, we're going to go ahead and foreclose and that's what they do Mm. Well, in the Chapter 13, you can take the that arrearage amount, the amount that you hadn't paid for the, say, the six months that you weren't working, mm -hmm. and put that into a three- to five-year payment plan. Wow. And then you just keep making the current payment, and the, the court forces the, the lender. Uh, the lender really has no choice if you're able to fully pay that arrearage over the life of the, 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 the plan. So you're saying, okay, so six, in this case, it's six months worth of mortgages. And what happens is it becomes, you know, put it in arrears. Meanwhile, you can start paying as usual, but you take that six months worth and spread it out over, three to five years. Over the, yes, over the life of the, the plan that the court approves. Mm -hmm. And the lender has no, has no choice but, but, but to but, accept it. Yeah, how is the interest mortgage factored into that? six months I mean you, um, just... you may still have to pay some interest on it depending upon the, the particular case mm -hmm. but the basic concept here is is that um, you you've got a, a steady income mm -hmm. and at this point whatever caused the the uh, the interruption it may simply be the employer went, went out of business mm -hmm. and it took you a few months to find a comparable job right, right. so a lot of times um, it, it's not that the people who are filing for bankruptcy uh, have done anything bad, have done anything mm -hmm. wrong. I, I think that's Sometimes a, it's just circumstances. It's a shameful thing for a lot of people, I imagine. And um, I did tell you that, you know, I was going to point that part out, that when people come to you for the first time or they call you and, you know, that there must be a lot of 
emotions behind it because you know a lot of people they're they're hard workers you know they have steady jobs for many years and something unforeseen comes about you know you don't know like an injury you said and all of a sudden you have all these medical bills and they're like wow you know that really takes a blow to your whole self-confidence that I was able to pay my bills and now I'm not able to Uh, when people come to you um, how do you you know I know you're an attorney but there must be sometimes that you have to have this empathy for them or you're just well that is, that, that's probably why uh, I, I will frequently explain that there is a long history of this, and it's, it, 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 it is a way that the government has set up in order to, to resolve the issue, mm. that there is a solution, that there is a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. And, and for a lot of people, even knowing that it, it's got its roots in, in, in the Old Testament makes them feel a lot better at saying that it's not, it's not simply uh, something that... Uh, the government is, is, is doing for me. It's mm. actually something that, that that has this long history to it. That's amazing. Now, you mentioned a seven years. How does that apply today in the whole? Well, the idea is is that um, you can't file more than once every seven years. Okay. Um, and, and, and get the debt to, to, dis, to discharged from um, and not have any further liability. Mm-hmm. So the Seven years is 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 is, is a, a line that is set up in terms of how often you can use the process. I see. Um, occasionally, there are circumstances that happen that people have to use it more than once. You also have the circumstances under which sometimes people, because of of their home, need to first get rid of um, the credit card debt that they may have accumulated while mm-hmm. they were unemployed or out sick or right. etc. Um, and only after they get rid of that that kind of debt can they then deal with the uh, debt that may be associated with with their home. Mm-hmm. So they may file a Chapter Seven, then come back with a Chapter Thirteen. I see. So um, it's like a combination. Right. And there's combination various, depending on the situation. Totally depends on situation. Mm-hmm. It, it's not uh, an area where 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 one one shoe fits all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So when somebody comes to you. Um, Obviously, you want all their financials. Um, I guess you would recommend that they bring everything with them when they come and sit with you initially. Well, what what I do is is unless there's they're, they're, we're really dealing with with an emergency, um, is that I will send them a, a questionnaire. Okay. And request that they complete the questionnaire and bring it with with them when they meet with me. Mm-hmm. Um, because without knowing v- very specific information about the their their situation, mm-hmm. um, we can talk in, in generalities like like we are in terms of the big picture. Mm-hmm. But in terms of really being able to focus in on resolving their individual problem, need to know the um, the type of debt they have. The, again, the distinction between being a lien or as as opposed to just being a credit card or, or as opposed to it being taxes mm-hmm. um, or combinations of these things all go into the picture of how you decide what is the appropriate remedy through through the bankruptcy court. Now, is there a, a minimum a minimum amount? Is there such thing as a minimum? Technically um, not, but mm-hmm. you know, bankruptcy stay on your, on your credit uh, report for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah, most negative information... It, Again, we've got the the seven year rule, right, right. Um, but the bankruptcy is an exception, so you don't want to use it in, unless there, there's really not a viable alternative. Mm-hmm. And what happens is 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 that there are a, a number of cases where, um, by sitting through and, and, and working through with them in terms of what is their overall picture, um, they may not have to file the bankruptcy. Oh, that's good. And in, in some cases, it's it's a matter of, of uh, making some, some choices um, mm-hmm. and getting some, some priorities. And because um, when you're in the middle of, of, of having the, the financial crisis, mm-hmm. sometimes, um, it, well, sometimes, it, it's, e- it's very easy to lose you know, sight of the, of the sky between the forest, you know, and the trees. and. Yeah. 
uh, and so forth. So it, it's just having an independent party uh, kind of look at it. Sometimes there, there are alternatives. And you guide them on <clears throat> alternatives? Yes. Okay. I, I Personally, I view bankruptcy as, as the last alternative. Mm -hmm. if, if you first explore what else is, is out there in terms of availability, um, because intent, depend, depend, depending upon what the, what the type of debt is, um, you may be able to work out, if it's mainly taxes, you may be able to work out a payment plan with the tax service. Mm -hmm. um, with the lender, um, with with all the, the government regulations that have finally been in place, some of the lenders are, are now more willing to work with you. You don't have to invoke the, you don't have to cram it down. They mm -hmm. actually will work yeah, with you. Yeah, I think things have changed since the crisis of 2008. I mean, it was so crazy there for a while, foreclosures and then short sales. And I think even on the short sales side, people have learned a better system to go about it for both sides. And I imagine that affected the whole bankruptcy law as well. I mean, what the kind of cases that you saw or started seeing because of that from 2008 and that time period of the real estate? Um, well, with the drop in value in real estate um, and, and the economic problems that were there, that's why the bankruptcy filings really soared. Yeah. Um, and they're back down now to, to a little more traditional numbers. I was going to um, ask you, what are the statistics on a yearly, maybe typically in Hawaii, only because we're kind of unique from the rest of the nation, that we're so isolated and we're so sensitive to the shifts. I think the people in Hawaii really feel it more. And so um, what do you see in Hawaii as far as the numbers of bankruptcy filings? What are they statistically now today, current? Well, I couldn't give you. I can't, can't give you exact numbers, mm -hmm. um, but they are they are running a good twenty five percent less than, than what they were a year ago. That's good news, uh, and that is good good news for the, for the economy. Um, the historically, uh, when I first started doing it, Hawaii was was in the lower ten ten percent in terms of, of of filings when you compare it to other states. That mm -hmm. is, we were somewhere in the 40 to 50 in terms of number of filings uh, when you, you do it on a per population basis mm -hmm. um, as compared to to, to, uh, to other states. Um, after the debacle that, that, that occurred, um, we actually got into the uh, the top 10. Oh, we the went, top 10. Yeah. But so you know, really I, I, the I, other. I mean, I, I don't think people will argue with that at all. I mean... Yeah. It's, it's hard to, to uh, sustain a really good living here to begin with, you know. It and is. a lot of people in hard times do turn to credit cards. And the credit card companies, they just uh, keep sending you stuff in the mail. And it's so easy to be tempted because you're, you're in a bind. Your family needs to eat. You know, you need emergency for, I don't know, your car had a blowout or something. And right. you don't have the cash. So there's a credit card or so you don't have wheels. If you don't have wheels, you can't get to to work if you don't if you don't get right. to work you can't pay your bill and you just add it to your credit card you know it's 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 so crazy sometimes you know oh it is it, it is and and that's and that exactly what happens because in Hawaii for a lot of people they, they really need two jobs to, to make it exactly and they, they may keep their main job but that second job that was that was part-time suddenly disappeared mm. um, and, and that meant that certain things that they needed um, the only way to pay for it was to use the credit card. Mm -hmm. And then the credit card companies, after you get to a certain point, will start raising the interest rates mm -hmm. on you. And then so a bad situation get, get, gets gets worse. So it starts snowballing. Very much so. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Let me see. I'm going to look at some um, questions here that we may not have um, covered. Um, I guess we, we talked about what bankruptcy can do for you. Like for Chapter 7, it'll... Pretty it gives much you a fresh start. Gives you a fresh start, but it will stay on your on your credit report for ten years. Yes. Okay. Um, and each year, year though, I mean, the, the effect is less and less. I mean, the the, the, the score will, um, even though it'll have a, an immediate negative effect, but actually, in some cases, by the time people file, their score is so low 
mm. that occasionally you actually see the oddity <laughs> where the score actually goes up after the bankruptcy is filed. <laughs> you because you kind of look. Because they, they've got no rid- more delinquencies. There's You're no starting more. all over again. That's correct. That's correct. And yeah. if they've got a steady job, um, there it, it's it, yeah it, it it is that is the exception. But there you you do see the cases where they, the score really does wow. go up even wow. with the filing. Okay. Um, also, it says, how can I get a copy of a bankruptcy filing? Well, bankruptcy filings are all public documents. Okay. And, and so you, you can go online and, and, uh, and download the, uh, the documents. I, I, in terms of, of, any, of, of, of who is, uh, who's filed and what and information about the particular individual, um, as, as to the forms, um, they there are a number of services that, that will sell you the, uh, the the package. Oh, so um, you when they come to you, or do you um, you do you provide that, or should people get it before they come and see you? Um, in in most cases, I, I know I, they 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 don't need to. Okay. No, no, and, and we we put that that the, the material t- together. Okay. Um, but occasionally, um, you know, there are people who will file it on what they call pro se, that they'll file it themselves. Under, themselves. Do, do, do you um, recommend that um, people no. do pro se? Because, you know, they've never done it before. I wonder if they missed something or... Right, because part of it is um, what do you get to, to keep mm. in, in terms of, the, of, of, of filing the bankruptcy. For the majority of people, if, if they do it correctly, they're 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 able, they're able to file the Chapter Seven, receive the discharge, get the fresh start, and not lose any, any assets. Mm. So you help them maintain um, keep as much of that as possible that is throughout correct throughout the whole process. That is correct. That's good. So it's better to give it to an expert. Well, it is, and, and but also it, it's it's in, in some cases. Um, and at least consult with 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 an attorney who knows okay. bankruptcy um, before you file it. If you even if you you're you're, you're wanting to to, uh, to to save the few dollars by mm-hmm. by doing it on on your own, you could lose something. You, you bigger. could lose something bigger. So mm-hmm. um, at least have it reviewed because once you file the Chapter Seven, you you it's very very it's the exception case with some very special facts, but. For the court to let you dismiss it after you file it, um, it's it's you know once you're once in your what's you're in, in play, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, so you got to really make sure that it, you've done you've done it and have done done it right. Okay. Um, because a lot of times there's there's a, a consequences that that people don't know about. They may have um, three years before the filing when things were were really great. Mm-hmm. Had an interest in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a property that was within 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 the family, um, and because of circumstances, they, they they may have deeded out their interest to to their brothers brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm. They go file, and then bad things happen. They file the bankruptcy, and suddenly, the the uh, the bankrupt the trustee through the bankruptcy court is saying, "Hey, that property you deeded back uh, that interest." That goes to your creditors. Wow! So it can have some totally unexpected. So you have to you have to be careful uh, if you're going to try and do it yourself. Very careful, and that's mm-hmm. also why the the attorney has to ask an, an awful lot of questions. Mm-hmm. That sometimes the individual wonders why Why are you yeah, asking so, me? Yeah, so be ready. You know, what, what I own? Be, what, yeah. what did I own four, four years ago? Yeah. Well, the reason is there. There's a four year. You're all connected. It's all yeah, connected. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that there's a tip. Be ready to be asked a lot of questions. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, let me see. We I guess we covered this uh, about the home and the car. Uh, what about the car? What will happen to my home? It says home. We kind of know about that. Uh, what will happen to my car if I file bankruptcy? If you're way? current on the payments, um, you, you are going to, and you want to keep the car, um, you are allowed to what they call reaffirm the debt. You, you re-pledge, you re-sign up under the same terms and conditions that existed mm-hmm. uh, before you filed. And as long as you keep making the, the, the car payments, you're able to keep the car. Now, if you own the car 
without any debt, then it depends on, on what kind of car it is, um, what 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 its value is. Mm-hmm. Um, it depreciates a lot, though. It depreciates a lot, and you look at what is the, for all values, what you're looking at at making the, an estimate in terms of what the value is at the time of filing. Mm-hmm. So it, it's not what was your original cost. It's not replacement cost. It's not depreciation cost. It's if I went to a, a blue, uh, the blue book, something like well, that. Well, for the card, be the blue book. If or if it's if 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 it's if it's uh, uh, furniture, you know, if I if I had a garage sale, well, what's the best estimate in terms of what it would it, it I could sell it for? Mm-hmm. Um, so if if you, you know, if the car happens to be uh, you own free and clear, a a, a Corvette, uh, you're probably not going to be able to keep it. Mm-hmm. Uh, regardless of the year of it, if it's still in good running condition. Yeah. Um, but for most people, you, they're going to be able to 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 to, uh, to keep the automobile. But it depends on what else they own too, because it's accumulative figures. And in Hawaii, um, well, under the bankruptcy law, there there's what they call a, a section of the bankruptcy code that talks about exemptions. What what can you keep? Mm-hmm. Under the under in Hawaii, you can either use the the federal exemptions, or the Hawaii state exemptions. Um, some states require you only to use state exemptions, or only some states only allow you to use federal exemptions. Hawaii, you can do one or the other, but you one have to one or the other. One or the other, which which means you you either. Uh, you have to pick. You you can't mix yeah, and match. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You, can't, you can't, <laughs> cannot mix and match. And but, so but, the consequence. But obviously, obviously, the the one that's more beneficial to you. Right. In in the best way. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So depending upon what it is, because sometimes, um, because of the, uh, if there's real property, it you may need to use the state exemptions, but then you're not going to have as much. Uh, play in terms of what you get to keep in terms of personal property. Mm-hmm. If if you don't own any real property, then in most cases people are better off using the federal exemptions because oh. they can keep more. Okay. So you got in terms of the automobile. That's kind of a long-winded answer to say. Yeah. Uh, in most cases, you get to keep the auto, but exactly how it's going to play out also depends on what else you may you may own. Well, that's why it's so important that you know you might as well use. A legal expert in this whole thing because it sounds like um, it, it's it's so unique to each situation of what you own what your debts are so really um, trying to do it yourself sounds like it's a kind of a not a good thing to do on your own no obviously I'm biased on that yeah, yeah of course. But, um, but that's why I said at a minimum before you file um, at least have one consultation with a bankruptcy okay. attorney to at least make sure that there isn't going to be something that's going to happen um, that if you just simply looked at the forms would not automatically jump out at mm-hmm. you, such as having maybe uh, gifted out some pro- some assets mm-hmm. um, back when times were good. Yeah. Um, but it's within the uh, time periods okay. that make a difference for bankruptcy. Okay. Well, let me see if there's anything else here. Um. Oh, can I get a credit card after bankruptcy? You yes. know, after you get rid of all those credit cards, then you're gonna go get an, another one. Yes, and and you know, in this day and age, not to have a credit card is is, is awfully hard. Mm. Um, there, depending upon what your your situation is after the bankruptcy, uh, but assuming you're, the individual is employed. Um, Particularly if it's if it's a if it's if it's, if it's a, a long-term employment, um, they're usually able to get a credit card fairly soon. Hmm. In some cases, what you have to do is is get what they call a secured credit card. Um, there's a, a handful of institutions across lending institutions across the country that if you deposit in the, in the bank five hundred dollars, they give you a credit card for for five hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, um, so you've secured the. the, it's, the it debt. sounds more like. You could just do a debt uh, debit card. Debit cards are always available, mm-hmm. um, but if if you're, for example, going to the outer island, you need to rent a car. The 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 debit card becomes real problematic. 
Mm -hmm. um, and so the uh, the use of the credit card, you know, to have one credit card is is good. I mean, most people don't have no reason to have more than two credit cards, but mm -hmm. a lot of us do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not to have any credit card can, can really create a problem. Right. But the credit card, it, it's not, it, it, it doesn't have a big S stamped on it or anything. <laughs> you know, it looks like any other credit card. So when you use it, no, nobody knows that that's a secured credit card. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but it also then forces you to... Um, Be more mindful about your spending. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Um, oh, can I be discriminated against filing a bankruptcy? Um, legally, the the answer to that is 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 no. Is no. Um, so I see this. I, I see this question here, and I thought there must be a reason somebody answer, uh, asked that question. Well, there there's a, there's a few things. I mean, one is um, because it is public information. Um, sometimes you you don't know if 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 somebody's went looking for some other excuse not to hire you mm. because it's on there. Um, but you really, you don't see very much discrimination. The main area where it's a problem is if, if you've got a security clearance. Mm. The bankruptcy can create a, a, a problem, uh, even though it's a federal law and everything else. Um, the, the federal government has got a procedures on its security clearances that, that are uh, real problematic for some people. Mm. So there are... Um, Somebody who's got a security clearance, you, you need to find out how how high up they are in, in yeah, the process. And, that's, that's interesting. And they, they, yeah, they may not. They may one be one that you really have to work to find a non bankruptcy solution for. Okay. Well, before we wrap up, we want to um, you know stop for a couple minutes here and just recognize our sponsors, and we'll be right back. So we're back, and um, before we end, I wanted to ask uh, Steve here the question about the means test. It says here, on the new bankruptcy law enacted in 2005 also requires that debtors pass a means test before filing a Chapter 7. Yes, what Congress did at the request of the credit card companies was add a, a, an additional requirement in terms of the information that has to be provided to the bankruptcy court. And the basic idea is, is that if, and the underlying concept is, 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 is certainly valid, if you had no debt whatsoever, um, would you be able to be putting money away in, in a savings plan? Mm. And the the concept behind the means test is is to measure whether post bankruptcy you would be in this debt free world because if so then you have to file the chapter 13 oh so that will determine which one you'll file for a lot of people the 7 versus the 13 yes mm -hmm. um, now the, the formula that, that that's used makes makes absolutely no 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 sense um, and it, it, it really is, is using a, the prior six months as, as, as the start place. And you can have a situation where somebody is, is, will pass the means test who has just gotten a very high po payment job but had been unemployed for the prior five months. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, they, under the means test, they, they, they're still eligible for the Chapter 7 uh, but they really do have excess income. Mm -hmm. You can also have the reverse happen where some, suddenly somebody's not eligible to do a Chapter 7 and they have to actually wait on the filing because they're now unemployed, mm -hmm. but they historically have been made some good money. Mm -hmm, so it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's got some real problems with it. But the underlying theory is, is to uh, push people into payment plans that have the financial resources to at least pay something, maybe only 20 cents on the dollar, 30 cents on the mm -hmm. dollar. Uh, and the part that's not paid is discharged just as it would be in a Chapter 7 after I the 13 see. is over. Right. At least the creditors okay. get some money. Okay. The whole thing is a lot, it's a very, very complicated formula. Um, and so you would take someone's situation and kind of figure it out with them? or Right, so. right. And it applies when the majority of the debt 
is consumer debt, which for most people, that, that's, that's what we're dealing with. That's the with. biggest one. But if the um, the debt happened to be you know, an individual who, who guaranteed on a business loan, mm. um, you know, he, he or she may, may end up being able to, to file the Chapter 7, even though the means test, if, if it applied, would say 13, but they don't have to follow the means test because the majority of the debt is, is not consumer debt. I so see. It, it, so it, it's, it's a combination of a lot of things. Yes, and it is. So um, what I'm going to do, uh, Agents of Change, is that after this is on the, um, on the uh, video side of it, I'll have information on how to contact Steve here, your address, your phone number. I'll have his email and his uh, website and so forth. So if you want to contact him and ask him some more questions um, that we didn't cover, obviously there's going to be any. Um, I'll have all that information there. And if you're not an agent of change, uh, it's simple. Just text your name and your email to area code 808-670-3400, and you will never miss an episode. And so uh, I just want to conclude, and thank you so much for that wealth of knowledge. I know there's so much more in in this. Um, It just looks like there's more, but I think you covered enough so people will be more knowledgeable of what their options are. Um, What... What I learned today was the Chapter 11, which I thought was, you know, essentially for businesses, but it's really not. Well, it's not exclusively. Yeah, it's not exclusively. Right. Yeah. And it actually was originally a, a very a controversial subject. It actually mm-hmm. went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Wow. Um, and I have to say, I, I filed a, the first individual Chapter 11, didn't even know it was a controversy. Oh. It went went through, no, no problem. And then a few years later, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that, there's, there's all these, these these commentaries. Can you do it? Can you not do it? Mm. To me, it was always very clear that you could. And at least on wow. that one, the, I that ended up in cool. the same place the U.S. Supreme Court did. Yeah. And what year was this? The first one was, was probably about uh, 1978, around there. Oh, so it's uh, a while uh, ago. Yeah, an individual who owned some property out in La Laie. Hmm. Okay. Well, I want to thank you, Steve. My pleasure. And for your time. And also in the video, we always like to shaka out, shaka. And in the audio, we say aloha and ahui ho. Aloha. Thank you for listening to the Legal Advice in Paradise podcast. For more information, visit www.legaladviceinparadise.com.